Hey guys, today we're going to be testing out whether the $7 waterproof iPhone case can survive a depth of up to 50 meters and whether you should rather spend $60 to $100 on a better quality case if one which costs less than $10 will do. The case has this weird flexible balloon like panel on the front which they've called an airbag. You can inflate this panel and keeps the water away from the screen and allows you to operate the touchscreen underwater. It's a pretty cool idea if you're snorkeling or swimming as you'll still be able to use the phone as normal. This only works to 10 meters though, so I suspect we'll see the balloon start getting squashed onto the screen when we go down below 10 meters. The product page says that this case can do up to 30 meters, but I thought I'll try to take it down a bit further to 50 meters and see what happens. I'm going to be testing the case in a testing chamber, which is sealed and then pressurized to simulate an actual dive. This is how most diving watches are tested before being sold. I'll be putting a diving watch into the chamber with the case so that we can see what the actual measured depth is and the time throughout the dive. Let's go ahead and put the phone into the case. The main body of the case is made from flexible silicone and two hard plastic plates clamp down onto the silicone edge to seal it. I'm going to be putting some water indicator stickers onto the inside of the case, which should show us if any water seeps through the seal. These stickers turn red once they've been in contact with water, and are similar to the ones used inside mobile phones to tell if they've been water damaged. I'll put one along each edge of the seal. Now let's put on the back cover and inflate the front panel. There aren't any instructions on how much to inflate the front panel, so I'm just going to do it enough to keep the panel away from the screen. Screws are all nice and tight, so let's test our case out. Here's the diving watch which I'll be putting in with the case to show us the depth of the dive and the time. Diving watch is ready to go, so let's put them into the test chamber.
chamber is ready to go, so let's start our dive. You can see after 5 meters, the panel on the front is already touching the screen in places. This probably means I could have inflated it a little bit more. At 20 meters, almost the whole front panel is touching the screen. maximum depth of 50 meters and it's all looking good. Let's keep it there for a few minutes to allow the water time to seep through. It's now been about 8 minutes and it doesn't look like anything else is happening. The water's had some time to seep through so let's bring it back to the surface. From this point you start to notice the air inside the cover start to expand again. The panel has almost expanded again and doesn't look like there's any water on the inside of the case. We're now back on the surface so let's take the case out of the test chamber and see if we've got any water on the indicator stickers. See on the watch that we've had a maximum depth of 51 meters and a dive time of just under 12 minutes. Flipping the case over we can see there's definitely water between the two back panels but it doesn't look like any water has gotten into the case. Let's take the watch off and take a closer look. 
There's definitely water between the two back panels, but it doesn't look like any's gotten through to the case. You can see the four indicator stickers are still white. Let's get rid of the water between the two back panels and take a closer look at the stickers. You can see some water has gotten through while removing the back panel and is busy turning the indicator stickers red at the moment. It doesn't look like any water got through during the test though, so it looks like this case is a good and cheap option for diving with your iPhone. I'm quite impressed that an iPhone case which costs less than $10 has survived to almost double its rated depth without letting any water in.